Over the last several months, CBS News has spoken with multiple veterans who were discharged from the U.S. military because of their sexuality. Although the discriminatory policies they fell victim to are now long gone, the effects of those policies linger. One former Air Force officer was jailed for being gay in the early 1990s, and the Pentagon still hasn't cleared his record. Jim Axelrod has the story. At Seattle First Baptist Church, where the Seattle Men's Chorus is rehearsing for its Pride concert, the power of the singing voices is matched only by the spoken stories. As my sexual identity blossomed, I battled with how to live the covert double life that was required of LGBTQ military members at that time. Like Steve Morosis, a respected Air Force officer in the 1980s, until the military discovered he was gay. It wasn't uncommon then for gay service members to be court-martialed and thrown out of the military. Morose followed his lawyer's advice to plead guilty. You were looking at 17 years in prison. I was, five years per sodomy charge and a year per conduct on becoming charge. For living your truth. For being me. Huh? He was sentenced to two years at Fort Leavenworth. My heart sank because again, I thought my military life was over, but in that moment, I thought my life was over. Rachel Van Landingham is a law professor who served 24 years in the Air Force. There are thousands that have been incarcerated for their sexuality. A six-month CBS News investigation found the military used a range of cover charges to target gay and lesbian service members for their sexuality. Does the United States military know just how many people have been imprisoned for their sexuality? No, because they don't want to know. But could they figure this out? Yes, if they cared enough, they could go through the records. Decades later, Steve Morose is still a convicted felon and still waiting for the Pentagon to clear his record. They have the ability to do a retroactive look and say people who are hanging under the weight of something that is no longer valid should be made whole. What could be bigger than restoring someone's humanity? A sense of justice to somebody's life. Especially if you're that person, nothing. The Pentagon declined our request for an interview, but in a statement to CBS News, a Pentagon spokesperson said it would be, quote, inappropriate to comment on a specific case and encouraged veterans who believe they were wrongfully discharged to reach out to the applicable review board to determine their eligibility for relief. So, Jim, if the Pentagon can't do anything mm -hmm. for Steve Morose, who can? Well, you know, it's interesting. They're saying, hey, reach out. We've got this process in place. The whole point here is that that process is fundamentally broken. One of the things veterans have heard that have been hit hard by this is, hey, seek a presidential pardon. Now, we ran that by the expert we just heard from. She started laughing. She said, well, when they do that, they should probably buy lottery tickets, too, because the chance of getting a presidential par pardon is less than winning the lottery. And Morose comes from a military family. He so does. How has his experience affected him personally? Well, it's been devastating uh, to him. Uh, you know, he can't get a job, as, as we just showed you, as a police dispatcher. Why? He's a felon. And this was a guy, his father was an Air Force Master Sergeant. All he wanted to do was serve. And, of course, it had to do with this most personal part of who he is being criminalized, essentially. We've, we've been documenting various degrees of prices people have paid. But Steve Morose went to prison. Jim Axelrod, thanks so much, Jim.